Here's the science behind why cats get bored of toys, the serious health risks of boredom if you don't prevent it, and by the end of the video, I'll leave you with a strategy that's guaranteed to solve this problem all without breaking the bank. You buy a new toy, your cats love it, but after a few weeks it's forgotten and gathering dust. Sounds familiar? It's because of a phenomenon called neophilia. Confused? We were. You can't buy toys every time they get bored. Don't worry though, I've read the scientific papers and there's a surprising twist coming up. No matter the toy, its quality, or even the quantity you provide, your cats will eventually get bored of their toys. It will happen. But why is that? Well, imagine this. You're thinking about what to have for dinner, contemplating your go-to favorites. For us, it's like shepherd's pie or even spaghetti bolognese. But tonight, they just don't appeal to you. You browse takeaway options, scrolling through endless choices, but nothing seems to catch your eye. It's stupid, you've got hundreds of options, but you can't decide. You simply crave something new, something different, something to shake things up. Well, that, that exact feeling is how our cats feel when it comes to having lots of toys, but nothing to play with. Scientific studies reveal that cats are incredibly intelligent, maybe even more so than dogs. I mean, show me dogs that have been worshipped for thousands of years. They are curious animals that require constant mental stimulation to stay engaged. In the wild, cats are like the John Wick of hunters, always on the move and always encountering and overcoming new challenges. This constant curiosity and drive ensures that they find new food sources, shelter and even mates. However, whilst domestic cats have retained the specialist set of specialised skills and instincts, they often don't have the variety unless we provide it for them, leading to boredom and behavioural problems. But boredom is much worse than it initially sounds, as it can lead to depression. What's worse is that the symptoms of depression in cats do not suddenly appear. Instead, they slowly creep up infecting our cats over time, making it all the more concerning. Despite indoor cats having food, shelter, warmth, safety and love, their lives can be dull and feel entirely without purpose. Veterinarians are concerned. More cats now live indoors and we're equipped with information about how to keep them safe. However, we are lacking the knowledge of preventing boredom in animals that are smart, athletic and curious who live within the confines of our home. Science has discovered a phenomenon called neophilia, the love of what is new or novel, which explains wild cat behaviour and why indoor cats quickly lose interest in things like toys. Interestingly, it's not just cats afflicted with neophilia. Dogs and humans are afflicted as well. Ever get sick of routines, even when they know the good for you? Boring! Before you go on a spending spree for new toys, it gets more interesting. The researchers also found that whilst cats love novelty, they also crave the safety of the known. Think cardboard boxes, their favourite hiding spot, or that one toy they really love playing with. For example, Wolf loves novelty. He loves everything new and this includes his food. Oreo, on the other hand, seeks comfort in the things he knows. He often gets nervous with new toys, slowly warming up to them as he becomes more familiar with them. Does that sound like one of your cats? Let us know if you've had similar experiences. This research tells us that whilst cats love the new, they also love the comfort of the known. Each cat is unique and they will prefer one side more than others. For us pet owners, it's our responsibility to recognize and understand their uniqueness and then provide a strategy to help provide them with the most fulfilling life. So quickly now, think of the toys or those items your cats love. Write it down if you have to because we'll need them later in the video. Before we get to that though, we need to understand how to overcome the affilia, this toy fatigue. There's actually a neat hack that we humans practice that can be applied to keep your cats mentally stimulated and mimic the natural variety they'd get from being outside. So picture this, you open your wardrobe and stand in there is Aslan. No, not the wardrobe to Narnia, your clothes wardrobe. Also, two wardrobes, damn, you're a boarder, eh? Oh man, all I can think about now is that bloody lion. <laughs> all right, so you open your wardrobe, some clothes you'd consider wearing right now, and some don't suit the current season. I bet there's items you wear more than others, right? Yet despite wearing them a lot, due to the changing seasons, when it's finally time to snuggle up in that jumper or wear that cool looking shirt, you are happy, almost nostalgic about wearing it again. The rotating seasons force us to rotate our clothes, which helps to bring back that novelty. Going back to our cats, we could employ a similar strategy, but with their toys. Toy rotation is a simple yet highly effective strategy to keep your cats engaged and prevent boredom, if done right. More of that in a moment though. 
By regularly swapping out the right toys, you provide a fresh and stimulating environment that caters to your cat's natural hunting instincts. A few moments later. It sounds kind of counterintuitive, but storing some away and then reintroducing them later makes old toys seem new again, grabbing your cat's interest. But it's not as simple as just swapping out some and then swapping in some. Before you set up a toy rotation, we first need to consider our cat's playstyle and the different types of toys they have access to. Well, we've got three cats and they all have a different playstyle. With Cookie, we really have to work to get her engaged and she will often only play with one toys. Oreo enjoys hunting toys and bashing them around. He will often bring us springs and finger traps to initiate a game of fetch. Wolf, on the other hand, is like a wild alley cat constantly seeking new and different experiences. We find him playing with a mix of toys or even mundane non-cat items. His favorite toy at the moment is the activity rug. So what is your cat's play style? Do they sound like a cookie or are they more like a wolf? Toy rotation will only work if we give our cats access to the toys that match their play style. You can split toys into these three categories. The first category is the interactive and activity toys. These toys tend to require human interaction and encourage physical exercise. Examples here would be wands, springs, laser pointers, or even motorized mice. These toys mimic prey behavior and provide interactive elements, a primary focus on keeping cats entertained via physical activity. The second category are puzzles and cognitive toys. These toys require problem solving to win treats or achieve a goal. Examples are puzzle feeders. Some require cats to simply pick out kibble, whereas other advanced puzzles, like this one we reviewed from Nina Otterson, are more of a challenge and require cats to problem solve to get that treat. These toys primarily focus on mentally stimulating your cats and also have a secondary benefit of supporting dietary management to improve digestion. The third and final category are comfort and scent toys. These toys primarily focus on your cat's need for comfort, tactile engagement and their senses, often providing a short burst of excitement and play you see after a good dose of catnip. Going back to your cat's play style, do they have access to multiple toys across these categories? Grab that notepad again and sort your toys into these three categories. Before we started thinking about it like this, we often had a lot of activity toys, but are not enough cognitive or comfort ones. Interestingly, some of the toys even span multiple categories, like the cat at Groovy Fish we reviewed previously. Now we understand our cat's playstyle, the different categories of cat toys, we can use them to help build and implement a toy rotation strategy. Step one, collect all the toys your cats have very nicely spread all over the house for you. Step two, declutter and decide which toys to keep, toss or replace. Often soft and cabinet toys will have significantly shorter lifespans, sometimes as short as only a couple of weeks. Always throw away any broken toys that could pose a choking hazard. Step three, sort the toys into categories like we discussed earlier. Be mindful here of your cat's personal play style. Like us, cats are unique and like different things. Try to always have a solid set of toys under each category. Step four, using your notes you collected earlier, create two toy boxes, one that will be out and one that will be rotated away. Ensure you have multiple toys from each category in each of those boxes. Step five, to make this easier on yourself, attach the process to another home routine. Another home routine? So another to another home routine, such as literary duties, or for us, we attach toy rotation to the weekly house clean. One note of warning though, always keep out your cat's favorite. This ensures novelty whilst also ticking the comfort and gnome box we mentioned earlier. For our cats, springs and finger traps are always left around the house. Our cats just cannot resist these. Step six, buy new toys where needed to ensure a good mix of the different categories. Articles different in opinions here, but we think about buying a couple of new toys monthly is a good balance. Here's our toy comparison chart. We've been reviewing new and interesting toys to add to this list. Get subbed if you're interested in not missing out on other ones. You can even refresh old ones with catnip and other scents. We even read an article which recommended rolling toys in leaves or grass to give them a new scent. Man, cats are super weird. Step seven, rotate your two boxes frequently to maintain excitement and reduce boredom. Opinions differ here, but we think rotating boxes every two weeks works well. But here's the exciting part. You don't always have to splash the cash for new toys to keep the cats entertained. With a little creativity, you can turn the ordinary household objects into feline playtime gold. Our cats just love the excitement of a cardboard box with peepholes added or even ice cubes in a bowl. 
As long as you make sure there are no small parts or toxic materials, you can craft toys that are both fun and safe for your cats to enjoy. By keeping things new and exciting, you can have fun whilst also strengthening the special bond between you and your furry friends. And who knows, you might even discover your own hidden talent for toy making along the way. The power of toy rotation and DIY toys is like having a secret weapon in your cat parenting toolkit. We've covered a lot of ground here, but let's not forget, when you're struggling to find something to eat or excited about wearing those old clothes again, think about your cats and whether they're happy with the same old toys. When you bring in a fresh toy, get creative with some DIY ones or even just rotate the ones you've got at home. You're not just fighting the boredom, you are also stimulating your cat's natural curiosity and hunting instincts, preventing the horrible, unknown and unseen creep of depression. It's like giving their mind a little workout. And trust me, as a pet owner, it's our responsibility to provide them with their best life. If you're worried and want to avoid bad toys in the first place, we recently shared some tips and tricks in another video and discussed a social media toy we actually bought twice. You can watch that here. We hope you liked the video. It took us a while to research and put this together. If you did, please consider sharing this information with someone who might find it useful. Drop a like and a sub if you'd like to watch more and let us know what unique methods work for you and your cats. Now go forth and create the ultimate toy collection for your feline companion because a happy cat means a happy home.